Paco Stanley was among Mexico's favorite sons, and when he died recently, the country stopped and mourned. For decades, his television variety show had lifted the spirits of his audience each morning with music and cheery jokes. He was a familiar and comforting friend. Two months ago, he was gunned down in a hail of bullets. It happened in broad daylight on one of the city's main boulevards. 26 bullets hit his car, seven slammed directly into Paco Stanley. The shock of his death turned quickly to anger and fear. Mexico's chronic crime problem now had a face. And if Paco, who next? Mexico City's most famous landmark, the Angel of Independence. But right now, what millions of people in this devoutly Catholic country are searching for is a guardian angel. Mexicans are living in a state of siege. There is no law here. That is terrible to say. I don't think I am proud of that. On the contrary, I feel ashamed. It's something that really hurts. Para su conocimiento, señores, empezamos el operativo de fin de semana. 10 p.m. and a police task force assembles for a special operation. A series of drug raids, always dangerous, sometimes deadly. The bulletproof vests are compulsory. We're going to Mexico City's slum district, Tepito. It's extremely hostile territory, gangland. The last time police raided here, they were fired on and some officers were wounded. This time, they're going in force. 65 officers and a number of masked informers. In the dark alleyways, among the flotsam of the city, they find cocaine, crack pipes and some cash. Cocaine. Violent crime has doubled in Mexico in recent years, and official corruption is rife. Drug fights are a nightly event. Yet it's kidnapping which has become the trademark crime of modern Mexico. This city of 20 million is suffering a kidnapping epidemic, and the criminals behind it are all too often the police themselves. As even Mexico's most senior policeman, Chief Samuel Del Villa, concedes. It's excellent criminal business to kidnap uh, people. What's the biggest ransom ever paid, to your knowledge? $25 million. Since Del Villa took over a year ago, he sacked and indicted 10% of his force though many would say that's nowhere near enough. This man, for instance, wasn't just a crooked cop, he was a killer. Mexico's most notorious kidnapper, Daniel Arizmendi, finally captured with his gang late last year. Arizmendi's fame came not just because he'd been a policeman, but for his unique payment incentive scheme involving pieces of his victim's body. If he didn't uh, receive the money quickly, he cut the ears. So did he cut both the ears? Yes, yes. Here is my mother and all the sisters, you know. Guadalupe Luesa is a writer, mother of three, and a passionate Mexican who, like many, sees the rising tide of crime and kidnapping as pointing to a deeper problem, a fundamental loss of faith in the country and its institutions. You must rule your own uh, law, your own rules. You must have your own rules. But because the big rules, the, the official rules, don't count? Because everything is on crisis. You know, it's, uh, there is a big lack of confidence, 
of uh, of hope. Uh, nobody believes in nothing now. Uh, everything uh, is uh, contaminated. Cuernavaca is where many Mexicans have fled over the years to escape the contamination. A small resort town less than an hour's drive from Mexico City. Here, the pace is slower, the air clearer. It's a good place to rear a family. Aldo and Francesco Jimenez were born in Cuernavaca and spent their childhood riding its rolling hills worshipping with their family at the local cathedral. Now, each Sunday, the Jimenez family come to the old church to thank God and fate for bringing back their sons. Aldo was just 15 when he and his 12-year-old brother Sebastian were kidnapped at gunpoint on their way to school. It's a common story in Cuernavaca, so common that to try to protect his flock, the city's bishop, Luis Reynoso, has taken the grave and extreme step of excommunicating kidnappers. It didn't stop them taking young Aldo. I got really scared. Maybe the, uh, you, your imagination flies. Maybe I thought the, their plan was to kill one of us and send uh, the other one. Aldo's older brother, Francesco, remembers being told the boys were gone. For us, it was really a terrible moment because we didn't know what was happening exactly. And we thought, why us? Why, why our family? We're, I mean, we're not rich enough to be kidnapped. I mean, we're nice people, positive people, that's what I mean. We don't, do, we don't hurt anybody, so why? Cada domingo, la iglesia nos alimenta. The boy's father, Fernando Jimenez, runs his own small business, a lot smaller than the kidnappers realized. Well, they asked me for $300,000, which uh, was too much for us. We are a middle class, class family and we didn't have that. After four days of intense negotiation and payment of $30,000, the brothers were released unharmed, the family reunited. Though with the crime of kidnapping, unharmed does not mean unscathed. You cannot never feel safe again. I, I always, when I'm walking on the street, like walk on the, uh, see on the side of the, your shoulder if anybody's following you. Like when you're, you're in the car, you, you gotta look to, at the corners. Well, that's what I do. It was in Cuernavaca, the historic capital of the state of Morelos, that the kidnapping epidemic reached a kind of crisis point last year, exploding into a massive public scandal. First, the head of the anti-kidnapping squad was found dumping the tortured body of a kidnap victim, a case he was meant to be helping solve. He's now in jail, but the corruption spread upwards. Three of the most senior public officials, the police chief, the attorney general, and ultimately the governor of the state were all implicated in the kidnapping. All of them were forced to resign from their jobs, but all of them are still free men. For exactly 70 years, one party has ruled in Mexico, the longest winning streak in the world. They control the might of the military and the money the power to appoint judges and other important public officials, the power to dominate utterly both the symbols and reality of national life. 
Not only can they do anything, the crimes alleged ranging from theft to murder, but by and large, they can do it unpunished. They call it the culture of impunity, and in Mexico, impunity rules, inspiring more humble criminals to follow suit. People is fed up with corruption. People is fed up uh, with a system of government that disregards the law. Corruption is a chain, you see. If you don't have moral quality at the top, then you won't be able to have moral quality at the bottom. And living proof of this theory of trickle-down corruption can be found in Mexico's jails. A staggering 85% of prisoners here are held for crimes associated with kidnapping sometimes whole gangs or families serving time together. But they are not the poorest of the poor. Like Armando Acevedo, a mechanic who, with three others, two of them university graduates, kidnapped a local businessman at gunpoint over an unpaid debt. How much money did you demand in ransom for this man? How much did you ask for? $800,000. How much? $800,000. $800,000? Yes. When you rang this man's son and made the ransom demand, did you threaten to kill his father? No, never. No, never. Never. No, the, it's obviously uh, when you kidnap a man, the, 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 la, mena, la amenaza es matarlo, no? You, if you don't, Give us the money, uh, I'm going to kill. But it was a botched job. Police ambushed the kidnappers as they attempted to collect the ransom. Armando was shot in the ear, an accomplice lost a leg, and a policeman was killed. For his crime, Armando got 14 years, but not a single peso. Obviously dirt poor now, like many in this jail, he didn't start off that way. When you take a look at criminals who are actually uh, uh, captured, you'll see that very few of them are actually very poor. Most of them have the money to buy guns and they have money to buy uh, uh, all the equipment that they need to, uh, to commit their crimes. This attempt to trying to demonize the poor, trying to claim that the poor are intrinsically criminal, is totally, totally senseless. Politicos de sus partidos, hay protestas que se dice que esto se está Sergio Samiento is a respected columnist and television interviewer with an unusual background as Latin American compiler of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Nightly, he grills the nation's politicians, though his interest in crime and corruption is deeply personal. Four years ago, Sergio was plucked off the street, locked in a car boot and forced to hand over a series of signed checks. That's what uh, they call an express kidnap because it is not a major operation. It is not, uh, it is not designed to keep someone uh, kidnapped for three months or six months, but it's just something they want to do right away, get as much money as they can in a day or two and then uh, drop you. What was it like in the boot of the car? How did you feel? It's very, uh, it is not something I recommend. I, uh, you begin to feel claustrophobic after a, a little while and after six or seven hours I really felt that I was suffocating and I, and I, I even tried to escape. I began to, uh, to feel my way to see if I could uh, uh, kick kicked out the back seat of the car so that I could get out and I knew they could kill me but I was so soft I was, I, was, I was feeling so bad that I thought it was better to die of one of one clean shot rather than to suffocate in the, uh, in the trunk of the car. Paco Stanley, slain just a few months ago, was one of Sergio Samiento's colleagues, and he attended Paco's funeral. Samiento remembers the grief and the fear. There was a big uproar. People were actually very upset. I saw people crying in the streets and, call, and calling for justice in the streets. If you don't control the problem of uh, public insecurity in Mexico, you're going to have a revolution. 
Samiento's boss, the owner of Azteca TV, is taking no chances. He drives to and from work on cleared roads in a bulletproof Mercedes with a phalanx of personal bodyguards. In fact, the men in black are everywhere. And when industrialists meet for lunch, their minders mass. In Mexico, bodyguards outnumber police and the private security industry is booming. If, if, you, if you suspect that there's something going on, you don't want to stop. Tom Shea, a former US intelligence officer, calls his course defensive driving. Essentially, it's putting you in the situation of a potential kidnap victim and showing you how to get the hell out. Hey, Tom, wake what? up. What? We're what? free. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's an extremely expensive experience, around $1,500 for the course, which includes the cost of the car bodies. But compared to a multi-million dollar ransom, it's a good investment. And companies are queuing up. And for the seriously scared, there's always option B, the armor-plated vehicle, offering, in military speak, level three protection against handguns. We also have a level four, which will protect against any type of uh, rifle, military type rifle, like AK-47 or M-16. What about against, say, a hand grenade or machine uh, gun? The level four will also handle most types of uh, machine guns and at least one hand grenade. Is that a big business, armoring cars? Yes, it is. It's a very big business. We have lots of customers. <laughs> In real Mexico, on the narrow, bustling streets of towns like Cuatla, you see the limits of self-defense. You couldn't even fit an armored vehicle here. But then again, who'd need one? This is a small market city. There's not much money here. Kidnapping and all its terrors are worlds away. For local radio talkback host Sergio Valdez Pin, a lifelong resident of Cuatla, that happy delusion was shattered last September with a single phone call. A gang of kidnappers had taken his brother, 42-year-old Geraldo. They demanded $20,000 ransom. As ordered, he took the money in a plastic bag to the local cemetery and left it at the front gate. Four days later, they asked for a further $10,000 and Sergio received a letter from his brother. Pidieron que yo no, él pedía que yo no, yo no me metiera, que no, no hablara con nadie. Sergio still doesn't know what went wrong. He paid the $30,000, but his brother never came back. Almost a year on, he believes he never will. Él era un hombre bueno, un hombre honrado, de convicciones, y que sabemos que ya basta. And do you believe you will find your brother's body and give him a proper burial? No sé. Quizá. Quizás. Solo Dios sabe. The blight of kidnapping has created many such lost souls in Mexico. The dead are not the kidnappers' only victims. And each day, every day, the tally rises.